Enzo. Hello? Hey man, where are you? I'm on my way. The Sonic movie's gonna start in like five minutes. I know, I know. Did you forget again? <laughs> no, no, I didn't forget. Okay, yeah. be quick. Okay, see ya. Bye. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? This doesn't seem right. Just give me a second. That's much better. All right. By the way, now that we're talking about this branding, check out this. Awesome new chairs with our logo and our name and on the back. That's right. The Commander. No, seriously, guys, I absolutely love these new chairs. They look amazing, super futuristic, and the fact that our logo is on there, it just makes me speechless. And I want to thank Maxonomic for making this possible. An awesome brand. I will put a link in the description below. The quality of this chair, and I'm not even kidding, is hands down the most comfortable chair I've ever sat in and it feels super sturdy, everything. And yeah, it's just like the highest end chair that I could personally imagine. All right, so I just quickly wanted to say that because I'm super stoked with this. I know this has nothing to do with the tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. By the way, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial using the exact same footage as me, I'll provide you with a link in the description below where you can download the tutorial files. All right, so for today's video tutorial, I'll be showing you how I did that pass shot using this footage and there we go i'm like running here a little bit awkward but that helps to sell the shot because you have a lot of movement the most important thing you have to keep in mind when filming something like this uh, especially uh, at night you have a lot of benefits because you're working with these light trails behind you and you do want to really have lights in your scene that's going to make it so much more realistic uh, if you don't have that you can always try to do it in post but it's so much harder especially to light up a dark scenery so we ended up using a came tv tube light and these are actually my favorite lamps right now these are uh, like just yeah tube lights that you can change all the colors off uh, you can play with the intensity of course to fade it in fade it out uh, do a frequency so it flickers uh, you have so much options even presets uh, where you can have like cop lights which is ideal for a night shot where you're coming home and you're getting stopped by the cops but you don't have the budget for a cop car so you need those lights <laughs> So yeah, that's basically how we did it. For example, uh, we have one shot where I ran out of the house and I just like went to the end of the street and we sped up that entire footage. So it actually already looked like a streak using this light. So we just lowered the shutter speed of the camera and had then these kind of results like you can see on screen right now. Anyway, so um, we ended up picking this shot right here. As you can see, I do have blue reflection here on my side and that's because the light is standing here off screen just to have a little bit more uh, blue reflection in the shot because we will be working with those light trails uh, lights. All right, so the first thing that I'll do is drag my footage into a new composition. And then I will just right click, time, and then time stretch. I'm going to set it to 10, so it's going to be sped up 10 times and click OK. If we're going to play that, we see this. OK, so this is quite fast. It's good enough, I think. And once you've done that, we can actually trim the comp. So press N on the keyboard here and then trim comp to work area. And then next, we want to go to the beginning of our timeline, go to edit and duplicate this shot. And then for the bottom one, we're going to right click time, freeze a frame, and we're going to rename this to clean plate. So that way we can now click on our top layer here and we can go for or we can apply the effect difference mat and then in the difference layer we want to select our clean plate layer that we just made and like this if we solo this we should be keyed out here as you can see so we don't need too much detail i think this works pretty well um so actually we're already done with this part all i want to do is go to effect blur and sharpen here and apply directional blur and set it to something like 250 and 90% in angle or 90 degrees. And then we have like a blur shape passing um, because I'm going so fast, everything should be in motion blur. 
If you want to kind of light up yourself like Sonic with lightning, uh, we can just go to edit and duplicate our shot and then just press, uh, well, change blending mode to an additive uh, and keep duplicating this until you're satisfied if you want a really bright subject. I think this is okay to do it just once, just keep it subtle. Uh, and there we go. So I like how this is looking. Next, I wanna create a new composition and here we wanna start building our streaks uh, that are left behind from Sonic. So I'm going to rename this to streak comp and I'm going to change the height to something like 500 but keep my width at 1920 and click okay. So here I wanna create a new solid layer and I'm going to click okay and then go for effect noise and grain and apply the fractal noise effect. Then open up the transform settings first and uncheck uniform scaling. For the scale height, I'm going to set it for now at 100 and the width maybe to 5000. So this one is looking pretty good. We can also alt click on the evolution stopwatch and then write an expression like time times 250. That's going to also animate it if you want a little bit of animation going on. Maybe this is a little bit too fast. Uh, I do want like a subtle animation, not too much. That's looking pretty cool. And then next you wanna just go and edit, duplicate this layer and set it to a screen. Go for transform and now set the scale height maybe to 10 or yeah, maybe like seven and play with the width as well, maybe 1000. There we go. Now we have a little bit more detail in there. And now you can duplicate it once more, maybe set the height to 500, 500, um, 250, play around a little bit and set the screen mode to a multiply. So we have a little bit of these dark spots in here and just play around with the settings. We can also play with the contrast for the other ones if you want a little bit more detail for the streaks, maybe increase the contrast a little bit. And now we have something like that. I think this looks like a beautiful streak. I think we can work with this. So um, lastly, what I wanna do is create a new solid layer, just a clean black solid layer. And I'm going to choose my rectangle tool and just make a small rectangle here on the bottom. And drag it up a little bit and press F on the keyboard, feather it just a bit to get a dark spot here on the bottom. So we have a nice kind of gradient falling off on our streak. So here we have me running. We're going to project and we're going to import our streak comp. Once you have your streak here, we can set the blending mode to a screen or an additive, that's up to you. And then find where you start running to the side. So right here I start, you can drag down this streak a little bit and we can also use our pen tool, maybe go a little bit more to the center and then kind of mask out yourself here and then just make it as long as the streak is. And there we go. Press M on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch for the mask path, go a little bit backwards until I'm off screen, select the first keys here and just drag this off screen like right here. And now I should follow myself until here and then till the end, I wanna do that same thing. Drag these keys all the way uh, off screen. Okay, so now we leave a streak behind. The only thing that we should do is also um, make sure that the streak isn't like endlessly long because that doesn't look okay. So we're going to create a new rectangle tool here. Press M on the keyboard and also create a new keyframe. And then a little bit later, we're going to select these keys here and just remove the entire streak and set it to subtract. Press F on the keyboard for both of these. And we're gonna feather the first one a little bit and then the second one quite a lot. I actually also wanna make it higher because there is a lot of feather applied to it. Okay, so now we have this. Next, we can click on our street comp and add a turbulence displacement if you want to add a little bit of subtle 
kind of displacement warps. So we're gonna set the size to something like 500 and the amount maybe to 10 and the center like right over here. It's very subtle, but it does something. You can even increase the complexity just like I did right here and get a little bit of gringiness in there if you want. That's a little bit too much, but just giving you ideas here of what's possible here. Next, you can go to layer, pre-compose this and move all the attributes into a new comp. And this is going to be our streak, just like that. And then here we can apply a solid composite so we can fill the entire background with black because we're gonna apply uh, some glow here. So I'm going to change this to an additive and then we wanna add some color. So I'm going to be using VC Color Vibrance. like this and color vibrance is a plugin but it's completely for free you can find that at videocopilot.net i will put a link in the description below it's a super handy plugin when it comes to working with black and white and just changing that into a color a very vibrant color it just works so wonderfully and um, so that's why i always tend to use this um, and that's looking pretty cool and now we want to apply a perfect glow preset, which comes from our website. Uh, we can, you can also download that for free. Also a link in the description below. And then just lower the intensity a little bit. And yeah, you can play of course with the contrast here. If you want more or less, you will see differences here. Something like that looks pretty cool. And we can also apply the color vibrance maybe afterwards because it looks a little bit better. So now we have our streak passing here and we have a lot of detail in here. So that's really cool. And then lastly, what you can do is create a new solid layer. Lightning and we're going to apply advanced lightning here to our layer. And we just want to bring our origin right here and like the direction, just bring it off screen here. Create a keyframe for the origin and make sure it just follows. So here it's off screen. Okay. And of course it's a little bit too long. So we're gonna really decay this uh, in the expert settings core drain, something like that. Increase the decay on the streaks to give it a little bit more detail. And for the glow, we're gonna set this to zero. Opacity, core settings, maybe something like five or seven. And then just apply the perfect glow again but change the core to some kind of blue. Something like that. Looks pretty cool. And change it to an additive. Okay. And like that, you can apply some lightning to your shot, as you can see. And all I have to do is just duplicate this layer and then press U on the keyboard, go to each keyframe and just offset it a little bit. So. Bring it a little bit down. And for this process, you just repeat it as many times as you want. I did like five or so, and like that you get a little bit of variation in your lightning. Of course, you can also play uh, with the core and drain and stuff like that. So maybe you want this to be a little bit shorter. So you're going to be increasing this here and just play around. And then lastly, what you can also do is apply some kind of spark hits. Like, like these over time. So like while you're running, you give off all that energy and you have these things that explode around you. So maybe you can bring this into your composition and then kind of uh, cut them off like right here in the center, like boom. And I actually got these from Action VFX. As you might know, I use it tons of times because they have the absolute highest quality of stock footage recorded for movies like explosions like sparkles and things like that so um that's what i have been using um just for the color you can just apply a tint effect first and then also the vc color vibrance 
and then set it to blue. Let's solo it for now. And then also a perfect low. And change the blending mode to an additive. And there we go. Of course, a lot smaller, so maybe like 20. And you can also duplicate these as many times as you want, but then like over time while you pass, you're going to see a few explosions here and there. It's giving a lot more detail to your shot, a little bit more, yeah, uh, dynamicness. Um, so as you can see also, I already passed and it's still kind of falling down. So that it's kind of a cool effect uh, on top of all of it. And then in the end, you should have something like this passing by. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and definitely check out our website. We have a bunch of awesome things to offer for any digital creative. And if you buy something from our website, it helps to support this channel. And also check out our latest video. It's pretty cool. Uh, I will put it like right over here, I think. So yeah, go check it out. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.